Have you tried wild huckleberry? Well, I'm gonna show you how to use it in a delicious recipe made from caramelized onions, green apples, cherries, shaved Brussels sprouts, and butternut squash. Hey everyone, and welcome to Weight Loss Wednesday. I'm Chef AJ, the author of Unprocessed, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss and Own Your Health, and this is where I show you recipes for healthy, permanent, sustainable weight loss. If you know anything about me, you know that I love vinegar in general and balsamic vinegar in particular, and my favorite brand is called California Balsamic. Generally, I prefer the savory flavors, and these are my five favorite flavors. The Blazin Habanero, which is also the favorite of the beloved Dr. Michael Greger. The Seven Herb Italian, which you can use as straight up salad dressing. The Sweet Heat, which really isn't very hot, at least not compared to the Blazin Habanero. The curry, which is delicious on everything as a sauce or stir fry, as is the teriyaki, which was the first flavor I ever tried because I was looking for SOS free sauces, sugar, oil, salt free sauces that I could use on things like stir fries and I was too lazy to make my own. And that's how I got introduced to California balsamic. Well, they have a new flavor called wild huckleberry. And I'll be honest, I don't really care for the sweet flavors very much. I mean, they're very good on things like banana ice cream or fruit or to be used a tablespoon or two in some seltzer water to make an Italian sauce not Italian sauce, Italian soda. That'd be interesting, an Italian sauce. So I generally don't like the sweet flavors, but it, I was intrigued by huckleberry because I never tried it. I love the word huckleberry. It reminds me of my favorite childhood cartoon, Huckleberry Hound. But I thought I'd give it a try, and now I'm on my third bottle because I gotta tell you, it's so good. I've been using it every day on my daily huge chopped salads, just as straight up salad dressing. It's delicious. Anyway, but I wanted to come up with a savory recipe because it's too pedestrian to just use it as salad dressing or on fruit. That's what everybody does. So I made this. It's so delicious. I'm going to be making it as part of my Thanksgiving meal, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So I did some things in advance just because I know you don't want to be watching long videos. So one of the things I started to do in advance was I roasted the cubes of butternut squash. This is 24 ounces or a pound and a half of butternut squash. Butternut squash is really hard to cut. And before you rag on me for using plastic as a 44 year vegan, please know that I don't have use of my right thumb. So it's really hard for me to cut things. So butternut squash comes cubed from Trader Joe's in 12 ounce bags. It also can be found frozen in many stores like Whole Foods, or you could even use kabocha squash if you prefer, which comes frozen in 16 ounce bags. Or you can just cut it yourself if you have a good thumb. So I use this nonstick silicone baking mat that my friend Jackie Shook gave me. I think she got it at QVC if you're wondering. It's called Cook's Essential. And it's like a Silpap, but it's got some, you know, sides, so it's much easier to use than a Silpat. And I've roasted this, oop, that's preheated, to about 30 minutes at 400. And now I'm going to put some of the wild huckleberry over it, and I'm gonna roast it for another five to 10 minutes. So I don't measure, that's why it's so hard for me to write cookbooks, because honestly, I don't measure anything, but I'm gonna use four tablespoons. That should be enough. And then I'm gonna just coat the cubes. It's so delicious. Vinegar is such a great way to caramelize vegetables and roast with it. You, you know, people think, oh, I can't roast vegetables without oil. Of course you can. Just get a good quality reduced balsamic vinegar, which is 4% acidity rather than six, and you can roast anything. So now I'm gonna put this back in the oven for about five to 10 minutes. Another ingredient in this delicious melange, which I guess is French for medley, but it sounds better than medley to me, is one large green apple. I've taken the core out. You can just use a wonderful tool like this, and I can link to my favorite place to get kitchen tools. It's a store near me called Kitchen Kitchen. I've done a few videos with the lovely owner, Jan. And this is a spiralizer. Now, a lot of people spiralize things like zucchini and cucumber, which are great, but you can spiralize fruit. All right. Whoops. It's always easier when the camera's not on. Have you noticed that? 
And I did this yesterday with no problem. And you have three different blades in this particular model. I'm using the medium blade. And I'm using a green apple for this because there is going to be enough sweetness from the huckleberry vinegar. If you're wondering what huckleberry tastes like, I've never had a fresh huckleberry. I would say it's a cross between a blueberry and a pomegranate. So it's just really a, quite a unique flavor. And I really, I don't know why I'm so crazy about this flavor, but I am. So we just want to spiralize this whole apple. It's such a fun thing to do. You just go until no more comes. Always keep your hand away from the blade. Looks like that's about what we're going to get. This would be really great in a salad too, just having a spiralized apple. And so now to that, I'm going to add two tablespoons of the California balsamic wild huckleberry. And I'm going to just kind of marinate this a little bit, get it soft. That should be enough for one large apple. And I'm going to gather up the rest of my ingredients. That's called my mise en place before I go over to the stove and actually cook this dish. But I want to show you, we're going to need a cup of chopped shallots for this. And I already have the cup here. And that could be four to six shallots depending on their size, but I've got to show you this fabulous tool from Kitchen Kitchen. It's very affordable. It's less than $30, much cheaper than the Tupper one, Tupperware one I used to use, and it has a larger area so you can put more in it. So it's great for chopping onions, garlic, scallions, carrots, nuts. You're just not going to believe how fast it is. And what's really cool about it is it cuts it so finely. Even I know chefs with great knife skills, I don't think you can chop it this fine. And it's so much easier than cleaning a food processor. So all it takes is a few pulls and look how finely you get that. So I'm gonna just add this to this and then we're gonna go over to the stove and I'm gonna show you how to prepare the dish. So now I'm going to show you how to prepare the dish. So I have heated up my pan on high. I am using a Pampered Chef nonstick hard anodized steel nonstick pan. If you're not comfortable with nonstick, use the best pan you can afford, whether it's waterless cookware or stainless steel. I've had this pan for 20 years. There's no chipping. It's very safe and I love it because of the deep sides, but whatever pan you use is fine. We're heating it up on high. And since we don't use oil in our sauteing, the way we know it's ready is to just take the water like this. And when the little beads of water start dancing around, then we know it's ready. So now I'm going to add my one cup of finely chopped shallots. And what's really cool about shallots is they cook in no time because they're so small. They don't take as long as onions. They don't have as much water and we will be able to caramelize these in seconds. And I have many videos on how to saute without oil, but basically you don't need anything. But if you feel the pan is getting a little dry, you just add a little bit of water at a time. Some people call this steam frying. And this is going to cook in no time. That's what's so cool about shallots. Now, I'm going to add some garlic to this, but I wait until the shallots are done because I find that garlic can sometimes burn. I'm turning the heat down just a little bit between medium and high. Now, my preference would be to use roasted garlic because when I've made this before, that's what I've used. I showed you how to easily roast garlic without oil in last week's episode of Weight Loss Wednesday. I believe it was episode 251, but I'm out because I keep eating roasted garlic on just about everything that I eat. You can see this barely took a minute. So I'm going to use fresh, which is fine, but roasted garlic is just a much better flavor in my opinion. It, it's just so good and, you know, I find that um, as a IBS sufferer, raw garlic sometimes doesn't agree with me, but I can eat roasted garlic. So I'm just going to use one tablespoon of fresh minced garlic. And again, if I was using roasted, I would have preferred it, but this will be fine. And we don't have to spend long sauteing the garlic. And again, you always have the water near you. If the pan starts to dry up, you just keep adding water. You could use broth, but I don't really think there's much difference, especially when you're having so much flavor from the onions and garlic. And you know, water is free. Yeah, you just don't want to drench it. It's a little bit of a time, at a time, and it will cook off quickly. So. 
they've hung out long enough. And now I am going to add my shaved Brussels sprouts. I'm using the 12 ounce bag, 10, excuse me, 10 ounce bag from Trader Joe's. If you want to shave these yourself, I'll measure it right now and tell you how many cups it is. One, two, three, four. So that was five cups of shaved Brussels sprouts or a 10 ounce bag. And I'm just gonna cook these. I don't like to get them mushy. I like to have a little bit of kind of bite to my Brussels sprouts, especially in this dish. So it'll be al dente, if you will. And again, you can still add water to the pan. I mean, even this would be delicious, even without the vinegar that we're going to be adding. Just anytime you have garlic and onion and vegetables, it's, it's delicious. In my opinion, I think that everything starts with an onion. I could probably cook without garlic if I had to, but I don't think I could cook at least not well and not without sugar, oil, and salt without onion. So, uh, I mean, I've heard this from many famous chefs. French chefs said the foundation of French cooking is an onion. I do believe the foundation of all cooking. And I'm not using onion because, like I mentioned, shallots cook faster. We've had an onion scare in California, and <laughs> it's been hard to find an onion. But actually, I do love using shallots. They're a little bit more expensive, but I think they're so worth it. So we're just trying to get this softened. But we want to keep it bright green. I love shaved Brussels sprouts. They're so awesome. I gotta show you this cute tool, which I use. It's an oven pole from Kitchen Kitchen. I just love it. It's, I used to burn my arm so much. And I could use the, the vinegar to deglaze the pan. I will use it in the very last one, but you know, since it's gonna cook off, I'm gonna save it for the very last deglaze. So that's how I like it. Feel free to cook it longer. And remember the large green apple I showed you with the two tablespoons of wild huckleberry? It's now completely marinated or macerated. And I'm going to add that. So if you wonder how I created this dish, it was from an Iron Chef. And my contestant was myself because I really wanted to see if I could use a fruity vinegar in a savory recipe. And I was racking my brain trying to think what I could do because I kept trying to use it in dessert recipes and it was, a, it was like nothing was happening. And I said, you know what? I'm going to pretend I'm in an Iron Chef like the ones that I do on my daily show, Chef AJ Live. I'm going to just use what I have in the fridge. And I had shaved Brussels sprouts. I had a green apple. I had butternut squash and I put it all together. Wow, that's looking really, really tasty. So that is pretty much almost done. But now I'm going to add the butternut squash that I showed you that I put back in the oven for 10 minutes with the four tablespoons of huckleberry. And by the way, that you could eat just this by itself. It's absolutely delicious. It's so much better, in my opinion, to use silpats or nonstick silicone mats rather than to use parchment paper. So I'm just going to gently fold this in. I'm going to add one bag of dried cherries. These are unsweetened, unsulfured, no sulfites, no oil. If you need a measurement, one, six ounce bag. It's a little bit more than a cup. And I'm just going to gently fold everything in. This is just such a beautiful dish. Look at all the color. And then for my last deglazing of the pan, I'm just going to do a drizzle. So maybe that was two tablespoons just to get every last bit of shallot or garlic off. And so we want to just stir this well. Now, if this weren't enough, I'm going to take it over to the island and show you how I'm going to plate it and eat it. 
So let me show you how I finish the dish and I'll plate it up for you. So I'm gonna serve this on a bed of mashed turnips. And what I did is I cooked some turnips in my adorable three quart instant pot. I just put a little water on the bottom. I didn't measure. 10 minutes on high pressure. And now I'm just going to transfer them with a slotted spoon to a bowl where I'm going to mash them. If you haven't tried turnips, they are delicious. And I'm just using a potato masher. You really don't need to add anything to this, but if you felt like you had to, what I would say is maybe a little bit of that roast garlic that I showed you last week. So you just mash it until smooth. If you need to add liquid, you could add a little bit of the water, but you probably don't need to to get it smooth and creamy. This just bumps up the nutrition of the dish. You could serve this certainly over mashed potatoes too if you wanted, but since it's fall, I love using seasonal root vegetables like turnips, parsnips, rutabaga. Rutabagas make great fries, by the way. I've showed you how to make rutabaga and turnip fries on this channel. So you could, you could get it as smooth as you want. Probably even use a food processor. But since I'm hungry, I don't know how much I want to be doing this. So there we have it. So what I'm going to do is on my plate, I'm going to take a bed of mashed turnips. Just kind of space it out a little bit. And I'm going to take some of my dish, make sure that I get all the components. We want to make sure we get some cherries and butternut squash everything whoa that this I gotta say I don't usually do fancy cooking but this is next level in my opinion because I've tasted this before so I know how good it is and again take all the time you need plating if you like there we go and then of course we always want to finish with a drizzle of the California balsamic. So there you have my new favorite fall dish made with the newest flavor of California balsamic, wild huckleberry. I sure hope you'll try this recipe and if you try it, let me know if you like it. I'm Chef AJ and I truly believe you can have both the health and the body that you so richly deserve. Take care.